Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate process model number 14 associated with Andrew Hayes process macro. Now before I get started I do want to mention that underneath the video description you'll find a link to the SPSS data file that I'll be working from in this presentation so you can download the data to follow along. You'll also find a link to a PowerPoint that will contain a lot more information than I'm going to be covering in this video so download that PowerPoint to learn more. So before we open up SPSS and begin running our analysis, let's consider our conceptual model. So process model number 14 essentially is laying out a, a situation where you have mediation that's taking place with one of the paths being moderated and more specifically path B. So in a standard mediation analysis, you'll have variable X being the independent variable, variable M, our mediator variable, and variable Y being the dependent variable, with path A, B, and path C all reflecting direct effects of one variable on another. And the computation of the indirect effect is actually quite simple. It just involves multiplying the coefficients for paths a and B. So that would be the indirect effect and then you can test that indirect effect for statistical significance. Now in this model we've added variable W here and that's going to be our moderating variable and you'll see again that uh, we have a path that's drawn from our moderating variable to path B and what that uh, reflects is the conceptualization that path B actually varies across levels of the moderating variable. So from a more um, a practical way of putting this, what that means is that the effect of the mediator on the dependent variable itself varies across levels of the moderator. So now let's consider the two submodels that comprise this overall model. And the reason why we're kind of uh, talking about these submodels is that this is how the output is broken up or broken out when you're running your analysis uh, using model 14 in uh, process. So you'll see first that we have model one where we have X predicting our mediating variable and we get path A right here. In model two, we have X, M, our moderator W, and then an interaction term that's formed as a product of M and W, all of those predicting our dependent variable Y. So you'll see that we'll get a regression slope for the effect of X on Y, that's path C prime in our conceptual model and that reflects the direct effect of X on Y. Path B that you see right here is actually reflecting a conditional effect of the mediator on Y and I say conditional because we are specifying that the effect of our mediator on Y depends on level of variable W. And then you'll see down here that we have with our interaction term if we have statistical significance associated with this regression slope then what that's going to tell us is that we have evidence of moderation uh, going on with respect to path B. So now let's consider our, um, our example. So for our current demonstration we will be using data from an article by Zhao et al. on the relationship between anxiety and burnout among Chinese physicians and it's a moderated mediation model that they were testing. And uh, for this demonstration, we are departing from that presentation in terms of how we're specifying our model and uh, also in, in terms of some of the scoring with respect to our variables. So we're pretty much just using the data and the variables in this demonstration. So now let's open up SPSS and begin running our analysis. So here we have our data. We have our neuroticism variable. Uh, we have burnout, we have negative coping, and we have anxiety right here. And uh, briefly, we have essentially burnout is going to be serving as our X variable, negative coping as our mediating variable, uh, anxiety serving as our dependent variable, and neuroticism serving as our moderating variable. So to carry out our analysis, we'll go to analyze, we'll go to regression, we'll go down to process right here, and then we will specify that neuroticism will be our moderating variable. We'll have burnout as our X variable. We'll have negative coping serving as the mediating variable. And then we will have anxiety serving as our Y variable. 
Next, we need to specify the model number by using the, the little drop down, going down to model number 14. You'll see that uh, we have confidence intervals set by default at 95%, and then the number of bootstrap samples set at 5,000. So we're going to leave those alone, and we'll next go to options, and we'll click on generate code for visualizing interactions, and we'll click on pairwise contrast of indirect effects where it says mean center for construction of products. I'm going to select only continuous variables that define products. And then you'll see it says mo moderation and conditioning uh, right here. And you'll see that first off it says probe interactions if uh, you have a p value that is less than 0 0.10. So if you have um, situations where you have uh, simple um, slopes where uh, the p value is not less than 0 0.10, then they're not going to show up. If you wanted to change that, it would be very easy just by clicking here and then you can go to always or, or some other uh, option. For conditioning values, I'm going to go with the standard pick a point approach by clicking on uh, negative 1 standard deviation mean and positive 1 standard deviations. So next we'll click on continue and then on OK and you'll see that it takes a few seconds for the analysis to run and get our output. And so now we have our output and let's just briefly review the model. We have model 14 uh, that's been specified. We have variable Y is our D, um, anxiety is our Y variable, burnout is our X variable, negative coping our mediating variable, and neuroticism serving as the moderating variable within this analysis. So the first regression output that you see right here is that model one, that submodel that I was telling you about, where we were regressing negative coping onto burnout. So again, burnout's our X variable, negative coping is the mediating variable. And you'll see that we have the regression slope right here of 0.3426, and we see it's statistically significant. So burnout uh, emerged as a positive and significant predictor of negative coping. And this coefficient right here of 0.3426 is our path A coefficient. When we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our second regression submodel. And in this case, we have anxiety that was regressed onto burnout, negative coping, neuroticism and the interaction between negative coping and um, and neuroticism and within this within this model we see that uh, burnout um, emerged as a positive and significant predictor of the anxiety variable so that is our path C prime reflected right there in terms of the negative coping coefficient you can see it's 0.2288 and we, we have statistical significance. But uh, in this case, we don't interpret that uh, slope as a main effect like you might in the context of an analysis of variance. Rather, this is a conditional effect of negative coping on anxiety at the mean on neuroticism. And the reason why I'm saying at the mean on neuroticism is that we mean-centered negative coping and neuroticism. So that's, how, that's the reason why uh, we would interpret uh, this slope right here to be at the mean on neuroticism. When we look at the slope for neuroticism, then this is essentially the predictive relationship between neuroticism and anxiety at the mean of negative coping. So just keep in mind that the reason why uh, these are conditional effects is because we were using those variables to form our interaction term right here and we mean centered both of those predictors. You'll see that neuroticism was a positive and significant predictor of anxiety uh, again uh, with that slope being at, uh, reflected at the mean of negative coping and then we have the regression slope for the interaction term is 0.1353 and we have statistical significance that's given uh, at the conventional 0 0.05 level and it's a positive slope so um, essentially what that's indicating is that we have um, evidence of moderation of the effect of negative coping on anxiety by the neuroticism variable. Now given evidence of that moderated effect we can then look at the conditional effects of our focal predictor which is the negative coping on um, on our uh, dependent variable at different levels of the moderating variable. So when we selected uh, negative one standard deviation mean and plus one standard deviation in our menu under the options what we were doing was picking three points along the uh, domain of our neuroticism variable to 
uh, to compute and test simple slopes. So you can see right here that uh, right here we've got neuroticism negative 0.3232 0 and 0.3232 and remember that because we mean centered neuroticism uh, then that means that the mean is actually going to be zero. So the 0 0.3232 is the standard deviation for the neuroticism variable. So uh, this value is just basically the mean minus the standard deviation. This value is the mean of zero plus the standard deviation. And so here you can see that we've got the regression slopes or simple slopes uh, for the effect of negative coping on anxiety at our three uh, points uh, that we selected along the uh, the domain for uh, neuroticism. So you can see the first slope it says 0 0.1851 and you can see we have that slope being statistically significant. Then we've got 0 0.2288 uh, with that slope being significant and then you've got 0 0.2726 with that slope being statistically significant. So as you can see all three of our simple slopes are indicating statistical significance but when we are probing the interaction it's a good idea to uh, try to visualize it using uh, graphing. So what I'll do is I'm going to uh, double click in my uh, output and I'm going to go to this portion right here where it says data list free go all the way down here and include the period at the very end and I'm going to right click and click on copy the next thing I'll do is to go up to File and click on New and go to Syntax. And so in this new syn Syntax window, I'm going to paste that Syntax and highlight it and then run it to get uh, some information that will allow me to graph our uh, interaction. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of my screen right here and go to this new data set that was created uh, by virtue of that Syntax. And so here you can see that we've got negative coping, neuroticism, and anxiety that are given. And you'll notice in particular that we've got uh, negative 0 0.790 and 0 0.79. These are uh, essentially reflecting a, a low, medium, and high point on negative coping. And then for neuroticism, we have our low, medium, and high point with, uh, on that particular, on the moderating variable. So now we've got what we need really to graph out the simple slopes and to visualize uh, the moderation that's taking place. So we'll go to graphs, go to legacy dialogues, and then go down to line. We'll next click on multiple and then define. So under this box I'm going to move the uh, anxiety variable. Actually I'm going to click on other statistic and move the anxiety variable to this box right here. I'm going to move my focal predictor which is negative coping, our mediator, to the category axis box and then neuroticism, our moderator, to the define lines box and then click on OK. And so now as you can see looking at this we now have our three slopes that are uh, that are plotted out. So looking at this you can see that we the blue line is reflecting the relationship between negative coping and anxiety among those individuals that are following one standard deviation below the mean on neuroticism. The green line is reflecting the relationship between those two variables at the mean on neuroticism and then the red line is reflecting the relationship between those variables among uh, cases uh, that are following one standard deviation above the mean on neuroticism. So you can see that in general the slope appears to become increasingly positive as we move from low levels of lower levels of neuroticism to higher levels of neuroticism. And the slopes that are represented uh, graphically there are essentially the same ones that we had computed up here in terms of the conditional effects of the focal predictor at values of the moderating variable. So now let's scroll down a little bit further and you'll see that we've got a section on direct and indirect effects of X on Y. And you'll, you'll see that we've got the direct effect of X on Y. This is path C prime again. And you can see that we have our statistical significance. But this is not anything new because we already had uh, computed that up here in our second regression analysis. You'll see it's 0.199. There's our significance test that's given right there. All that information is exactly the same in uh, this portion of our table. Now below you'll see that we've got 
an index of moderated mediation right here. So this quantifies uh, the level of moderated mediation that's taking place in the form of this index. So this is the uh, coefficient value right here. And we can test that coefficient for statistical significance to make a determination or a judgment as to whether we have whether or not we have evidence of moderated mediation taking place. So we've got uh, the way that we uh, perform the test is to use our bootstrap confidence intervals that are formed and essentially the way that we perform our test is uh, in the following way. If zero, which is the null hypothesis, if zero falls between the lower and the upper bound of our confidence interval, then we would fail to reject the null and infer that the moderated mediation is zero in, in the population. If zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, then we would determine that we have a statistically significant uh, moderated mediation effect that's taking place. And you can see right here that zero is falling between the lower and the upper bound uh, of our bootstrap confidence interval. So we would determine then that we do not have a statistically significant moderated mediation effect taking place. Uh, nevertheless, we're going to consider some other portions of our output. So you'll see up here it says conditional indirect effects of X on Y. Uh, and then right here you'll see that it's got uh, indirect effect, again, burnout, predicting negative coping, predicting anxiety. But we have three different coefficients that are uh, computed right here. And that's three indirect effects reflecting different levels of our moderator variable. So again, this is one standard deviation below the mean, at the mean, and one standard deviation above the mean on our centered neuroticism variable. So all of these are conditional indirect effects uh, that are essentially computed as a product of path A and path B at a given level of the moderator variable and more specifically one standard deviation below the mean, at the mean, and one standard deviation above the mean on the moderator. So we can test those conditional indirect effects out by using our bootstrap confidence intervals that are uh, printed out right here. And so we follow the same general logic that we followed below with respect to the index of moderated mediation. So if zero, uh, which is the null hypothesis, if it falls between the lower and the upper bound of our bootstrap confidence interval, then we would determine that that conditional indirect effect is statistically uh, is not statistically significant. If zero falls outside of the lower and the upper bound, then we would determine that that the conditional indirect effect is statistically significant. So once again, if zero falls between the lower and the upper bound, then we would not determine the indirect effect being significant. If it does fall outside the lower and the upper bound, then we would uh, consider that conditional indirect effect statistically significant. So you can see, uh, looking at all three of these confidence intervals, that zero does not fall between the lower and the upper bound. So all three of those conditional indirect effects are significantly different from zero. Okay, the last portion that I want to refer you to are the pairwise contrasts between the conditional indirect effects. So essentially what we're doing in this case is we are computing differences between the conditional and indirect effects that are pr printed out up here. So you'll see, looking at um, our table, we've got effect 1, effect 2, and then there's a contrast. And so the contrast essentially entails taking effect 1 and subtracting effect 2. Uh, to get that contrast estimate and then we can test the difference in the conditional indirect effects using you guessed it the bootstrap uh, confidence intervals so to start off with this first one you'll see it says 0 0.084 and 0 0.634 for the second effect right there and that's just basically taking uh, this value right here and this value so if I take the first value and subtract the second one that gets me a contrast estimate of 0 0.015 and you can see that 0 does fall between the lower and the upper bound of this con uh, of the uh, bootstrap confidence interval so that tells me then that there is no significant difference between the first conditional indirect effect and the second one that that is uh, represented in this table right here Next, you can see that we have 0 
minus 0 0.0634. So that's the 0 0.094 minus 0 0.0634. That gets us a contrast estimate of 0 0.03. And you can see, once again, 0 falls between the lower and the upper bound of the confidence interval. So uh, that would tell me, once again, that we do not have a significant difference between the conditional indirect effects uh, that are computed at one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean right there. And you'll also see that that last conditional indirect effect uh, in terms of the contrast estimate uh, and uh, the, the uh, test results in, including the bootstrap uh, test results, that's going to mirror uh, the first test that's up here in this first row. So uh, I'm not going to spend any time on that, just kind of noting that particular issue. So. At any rate, that pretty well concludes this video presentation on how to perform uh, moderated mediation analysis using process model number 14. So I appreciate you watching and you guys have a great day.